Hi, my name's Ian Goodwin. I work for Agriculture Victoria and we're at the Tatura Smart Farm today and we're going to be talking about the studies that Lexi McClymon has been doing on evaporative cooling. So um, for a start, Lex, could you just give us a bit of an, an overview of the experiment you're doing here in, this is a block of Corella pear, but yeah, give us an overview of the different treatments that you've applied. Yeah, so basically we have a control treatment and then we have an evaporative cooling treatment and we applied that by um, setting a temperature threshold of 32 degrees and the um, overhead emitters come on when we hit 32 degrees and they cycle on and off until the temperature drops again later in the in the evening. So when you say cycle, what's the sort of on off times with that cycling of the evaporative cooling? Yep. So We'd cycle it on off for 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off, or if I was worried that it was a particularly warm day, I might set it to 20 minutes on, 10 minutes off. Yep, yep. And then of course the control is? And the control is no overhead irrigation at all. Yeah, yeah. But they all get irrigated, you know, exactly the same. Yep, they get yep. managed all the same, etc. It's just yep. trying to look specifically at the at, at the purely evaporative. just the evaporative cooling effect. Yep, yep. 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 And of course, we're looking then at harvest for responses in terms of sunburn damage or sun degradation and the extent of blush coverage. Yeah. So, I mean, the objective of it is really to prevent that uh, excessive high temperatures in the fruit, which causes the, um, you know, directly sunburn damage. And we think maybe in the, these bicoloured pears that you can get some bleaching in the colour. That's right. Isn't yeah, it? so that's what we think from previous work looking at anthocyanin and production and degradation. There's an optimum sort of temperature range for, for producing and maintaining anthocyanins and above that you start to get some degradation. So it's looking both at the sunburn response but also seeing if there might be just a general improvement in colour from having the evaporative cooling. Um, and another thing that we implemented um, from a month out from harvest, so in that lead up to, to harvest, was we started putting the evaporative cooling on early in the morning. About five o'clock in the morning, it'd come on for half an hour. And the idea with that is that if you can increase the difference between the daytime temperature and the nighttime temperature, some studies have shown um, in other crops that that gives you an improvement in red colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, trying to see if we could generate that yeah. in pears as well. Yeah, yeah, and these are Corella pears, so they get harvested approximately... Late Feb, we pick them, end of Feb, 28th of Feb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're really still in that really hot period of the of the season, um, unlike some of the late season apples where, you know, you're getting those cool nights that can develop the colour. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, evaporative cooling really hasn't been used before in pears, or I've, I don't know of any use of it. Uh, but of course, it's been you know, extensively used in, in apples. So in the Golden Valley, for example, there's quite a bit of evaporative cooling. Or Washington State, they use a, a lot of evaporative cooling. So, you know, what's, uh, what do you think is one of the main problems in the Golden Valley with using evaporative cooling? Yeah, the main problem that we experienced here um, was silt in the water. Um, using the channel water, it's not the cleanest, and even with the, all the filters at different stages through the irrigation system, we were finding that we were getting a silt layer on the fruit. We started doing the overhead sort of late December, started getting some hot days then, um, and I think by mid to late January, I was starting to notice the silt layer developing, and by harvest, it was really obvious. So Lex, what sort of uh, results or preliminary results are you seeing from the experiment here in the in the pairs with respect to evaporative cooling? So far, we're not seeing much of an, an effect. Um, we've put the pairs into storage and we've just taken measurements yesterday of the colour post-storage. Uh, the trends look pretty similar to what we saw at, at harvest and overall at this point, I'd say there's not much benefit. Yeah, yeah. And sun damage, is that true with the... You know, any sunburn damage you yeah, might have seen on the fruit? It was interesting, despite the season that we had, mm. the, the distinct sunburn damage that you can see in pears, we did not see much of that in the corellas this season. Mm. But I do think that we saw some colour degradation. From excessive high from, temperatures. From heat, yep. yeah. 